In this tutorial, I want to have a very brief look at some of the other preferences that we've got in Sony Vegas Pro and things that might be of interest to you. Preferences are found under the Options menu. Right at the bottom, you've got Preferences. Click on Preferences, and we've looked at these briefly in the past. So we turned off, for instance, Automatically Open Last Project when starting. And I also changed at the bottom that a double click on media files loads them into a trimmer instead of into the tracks. But there's a couple of others that might be of interest to you. I mentioned this previously, make spacebar and F12 play pause instead of play stop, but you should be using JKL by now and not worrying about those. And also this one, import stereo as dual mono. We'll recover this again later on, but if you've got stereo files and you want to have them as two separate mono tracks, you can change it there. There's not a great deal else that I would usually change inside this dialog, so I'm gonna quickly move across some others. Let's look at the video tab. And this is where you specify what video card you're using. Now I've got an old laptop here and you can see it's got an old uh, mobile laptop card and that's what the system's using because that's what's available. But up here, it looks at the system RAM you've got and how much you are going to allocate to Sony Vegas. Well, I've got sort of seven, eight gig and I've allocated about five gigs. So I'm leaving two gig roughly for other applications. The higher this is, the easier it will be when you do those RAM previews. When you've got something that doesn't play back properly and you want to have a look at it and make it play back properly, then you're going to put it into RAM so that it plays back at full speed having had a look at it. So this is where you can specify it. Don't overdo it. If you make this too close to your system RAM, there's a fairly high probability that your system will go slower, not quicker. So just you know a good proportion, but, but certainly not all of it, because there are other things trying to use RAM all the time on your system. Okay, thumbnails are these items here. So you look at this image, and you see I've got a thumbnail here, thumbnail here, and a thumbnail here. You can actually change, so you can say I don't want any thumbnails at all. It won't update until I do apply. Or I want them just at the head, just at the beginning of the clip, or the head at the tail of the clip or in the head tail center, which is default, or all. So if you do all and ask to apply, then click OK. And then when I pull this clip out, you'll see that there's, there's one for every frame as much as you can see and fit. So I'm just going to go back to my options, preferences, video, and take that back to head tail and center. It does use up a little bit of resource on your system, so if you've got a very old system, you might actually want to take it down to just head or even none at all if you don't need to see it. But I think having something is helpful because you know which clip is what and where it is in your timeline. So the minimum is just head. That would be the minimum that I would go to. But my system seems to cope well with all three. We've talked very briefly in the past about the safe title safe and action safe area. You can change its settings here. And also, if you always want your footage to display at its original size, you click this button. And then when you click OK, if you look at this here, you see this is the project size, this is the preview size. When I click Apply, you see it's always going to play it at the original size. So although it looks like it's with the title and action safe, it isn't. So I'm just going to turn that off because I don't really want that to happen. Just Apply. OK, background colour is only the background colour of the viewer. And sometimes people like to have a very black background. So if you were to click the drop down for the background colour and click black and click apply, you'll see that the background to the viewer is black. OK, and you can change that to white as well if you want, if you feel that having a contrast would help. I certainly wouldn't go brighter. Um, I'm quite happy to leave it a default grey. Default grey is quite neutral, and so you tend to get a good feel for what's going on if there's not too many colours around bits and pieces. OK, moving on, um, preview devices. If you've got preview devices, such as Blackmagic cars or whatever, you can actually use them and set them up here. Audio, don't really need to change anything in this. Record to broadcast WAV format is standard. I would carry on using that. And if you ever use the metronome, you can set up a custom metronome sound but we're not going to use that. So you can leave things pretty much as is here. Audio devices is just what are you going to use to record audio if you record into Vegas Pro? Bearing in mind, of course, that Vegas Pro is pretty much a professional recording application as well as a video editor. Now, I've got a quad capture card on here, so I could, if I want, say, I want my quad capture card. It's going to set up my quad capture card, and I can work out the bits and pieces, and I can apply that if I want to. Similarly, it's looked through what I've got available. For instance, it's picked up my quad capture card here as well. And VST effects are effects that 
are sometimes available on your system. Now, my system happens to have Sonar on here as well, which is a recording application from Roland. So it's picked up lots of effects, but you might not have any in here. It all depends on what your system is like and what you've got on your system. But don't worry if you've not got anything in there. Very briefly moving on, when we look at editing, there's a couple of very important things to know about here. Firstly, JKL. We've started using JKL to go backwards, stop and forwards. You can change the speed in which it works here if you want to. It's left on medium by default. And of course, you, the more you tap a key, the faster it will go. But you could start on slow and then tap keys to go faster, depending on what you want to achieve. So I'm going to leave mine at medium. The other item is still images. If you bring still images into your timeline, how long will they display for? Because, of course, a still image is not a moving image. It's just one frame. Well, you can see by default it's chosen to be five seconds. That's based on my project, which is 25 frames per second. OK, so if you want still images to come in for a lot longer than five seconds, you can change it here. Or you want it to come in a lot shorter than five seconds, you can also change it here. Now, I'm going to show you one other thing about still images. So I'm going to click Apply, and I'm going to click OK. And I'm actually going to import a still image. So if I go to Pics, and I'm going to bring in Dunstanborough Castle here. So if I just bring in Dunstanborough Castle, drop it on my timeline, you can see that that is a five-second clip. OK? It's going to go on for five seconds. I could zoom in if I wanted to, and you can see that pretty much it's a five-second clip. All right? Now, we can change that, as you've seen before, with the preferences. The other thing I want you to notice, though, is that the clip is showing in all its glory, but it's scaled to just the height, because the clip itself has not got the same aspect ratio as my project. So if I double-click the clip, you can see that's what it's supposed to look like, and I'm pretty much seeing all of that in there. It's forced to fit the height, but because it's not the same aspect ratio, there are black bands at both sides. Let's go back to the preferences. Option, preferences, editing. You'll see at the bottom, it's got automatically cropped still images added to the timeline. OK, so if I click that button and I apply and I click OK, nothing happens to anything that's already imported. OK, the clip that's on my timeline has not changed. Even if I click the refresh button up here, nothing's going to change. It's going to remain the same. If I bring the same image in, however, beside it, and drop it down here. There's the same image before and after. OK, so there it is as we originally brought it in. And here it is as we brought in the second version. If I click on the second version, so this is the one that's been cropped. And now we've changed the preferences and I click it on here. You'll see that it has actually cropped the image so that the image actually fits. And we can see it cropped and filling the screen. Now, there are problems with that. This is clearly not going to work for all images because you can see here, I might want to see more of the sky, but I've got no choice. So I would need to use other options to see a different part of the clip. And there are plenty of options for doing that. So, so don't worry, we'll cover those in a separate tutorial. OK, so let's just quickly go back to our preferences. So option preferences. We've looked at the editing ones. So are there anything else in the editing? There's one here that says automatically overlap multiple selected media when added. What that's going to do is create multiple crossfades. So if I click that one and I click apply, and I have to bring in a whole bunch of images, let's go to my project media. I've only got the two, but if I bring both of those in and I drop them on the timeline, and I zoom out to have a little look at what's gone on, you'll see that it's automatically put a crossfade. So using that option will automatically give you a crossfade on all the items that you bring in. However, I think you can overdo it with crossfades. You've got to be pretty careful about doing that, so I'm not going to do that one. Display is simply about the colours, and you can play around with these, and you can go in there and you can change colours, and you can make things look very different. However, if you do completely muck it up and it's all, you know, looks terrible, and you're not happy with the end result, and it's ended up looking wrong, you've got this default all, which takes everything back to default. So you don't have to use the Sony scheme. You can use different schemes as you like. And we don't need to look at the other ones at the moment. I think that'll do. So those are essential preferences, which are just worth knowing. When you've finished, however, you've got to click the Apply button, because if you don't click Apply, it's not applied. So click Apply, click OK, and your options are applied, and you're ready to go. I hope you found this useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.